Welcome to my video tutorial on the ionic product of water KW and the pH of strong bases. So far we've looked at how to calculate the pH of a strong acid using which can be used as virtually all uh, strong acids ionise fully. And so for a strong monoprotic acid we can say the concentration of the hydrogen ion is the same as the concentration of the acid. And we know that strong acids have a pH between 1 and 3. We also know from GCSE that strong bases have pHs between 12 and 14. So now we need to know how to calculate the pHs of those proton acceptors. To do this, we need to look at Kw. And this stands for the ionic product of water. Water is slightly ionised and can be written as, and remembering that we have that oxonium ion formed. Now we can simplify this further. And we can say that this is an acid base reaction where one molecule of water donates a proton to another. Now water only dissociates by a very small amount and the equilibrium actually lies very heavily to the left. However, it's still in equilibrium, and we can write an equilibrium expression as follows, where we've got the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. But the reactant here is just water, and it barely dissociates at all, and therefore its concentration is constant. And we can actually modify this expression and give it the term Kw, where Kw is equal to Kc multiplied by the concentration of water. Now if Kw is equal to Kc multiplied by the concentration of water, then we can say that Kw is equal to this. And we can then cancel out the waters. And this now gives us our final definition for the ionic product of water where Kw is equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ion multiplied by the concentration of the hydroxide ion. And at 298K, or 25 degrees C, this value is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And this will be in mole squared to the dm to the minus 6. And we can say for each molecule of water that dissociates, it gives one hydrogen ion and one hydroxide ion. So if this is the case in pure water at 298, we can say the concentration of the hydroxide ion is equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ion. So therefore, we can go on to say that, that Kw, or 1 times 10 to the minus 14, is indeed equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ion squared. So therefore, the concentration of the hydrogen ion is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per decimeter cubed, which is equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ion con uh, concentration. And don't forget that this is at standard conditions at 298K. OK, so we know that a neutral aqueous solution has a pH of 7. Now we can use the ionic product of water to prove this, because at 298K, Kw is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And we also know that the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration. And we know that this is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7. So we can now use pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, which equals pH is equal to 7. We also know that all equilibrium constants are temperature dependent. And in this equilibrium reaction for water, 
the forwards reaction is actually endothermic and it comes out as about 57 kilojoules per mole. So here we can apply the good old Le Chatelier principle. So as we increase temperature, uh, the reaction will favour the endothermic side, so therefore it will push it to the right, producing more hydrogen, ion, more hydrogen ions. And obviously if they increase in hydrogen ions, therefore the pH will actually decrease. Now, if we lower temperature, then the equilibrium will shift towards the exothermic side, which will be towards the left. Therefore, there will be fewer hydrogen ion concentration, and therefore the pH will increase. Now, this is quite important to remember this. Uh, you often get asked about increasing and decreasing temperature in equilibrium reactions and we'll actually be able to put this into motion in a moment. But first just let's remember that neutral actually means that the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to the concentration of the hydroxide ions. Acidic means that there's more hydrogen ions and of course the pH will be lower and basic means that there are more hydroxide ions and the pH will increase. But just remember that pH 7 doesn't necessarily mean neutral. So what's the pH of water at 323 which is 50 degrees higher than standard room temperature where Kw is equal to 5.476 times 10 to the minus 4? So what do we know? Well we know that Kw is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration multiplied by the hydroxide concentration. And we know from the question that Kw is equal to 5.476 times by 10 to the minus 4. We know from equilibria that the concentration of the hydrogen ion is equal to the concentration of the hydroxide ion. And when neutral, Kw is equal to the hydro hydrogen ion concentration squared. So if we want to get the hydrogen ion concentration, which we're going to need if we want to calculate pH, then we need to do the square root of Kw. And if we pop that into our calculators, we come out with 2.34 times 10 to the minus 7. We know the formula for pH. And if we put that into our calculators, it comes out as 6.63. So we can see at a higher temperature, we've actually got a lower pH. But this doesn't mean that water is acidic at 323K. Um, it's always neutral, and it has, and that's because it's got an equal number of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. What this does actually tell us is that water is neutral at pH 6.63 at 323K. And at boiling point at 373K, it's neutral at pH 6.14. And I'd like you to be able to answer this question for next lesson. Now the last part of this tutorial is to be able to use the ionic product of water, Kw, to calculate strong bases. So we know the value of Kw. And just like acid, strong bases virtually all ionise in aqueous solutions. And because of this, we can say that the concentration of those hydroxide ions is going to be the same as the concentration of that base. Now, if we want to calculate the pH of a strong base, we have to remember that pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of that hydrogen ion. And Kw is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration multiplied by the hydroxide ion concentration. And rearranged, it gives that hydrogen ion being equal to Kw over the hydroxide ion concentration. So to work out pH, we need to find out that hydrogen ion concentration. And we're going to find that from these two key bits of information. From a question, we'd need Kw and we're going to need 
the concentration of that hydrogen ion, uh, hydroxide ion, sorry, and that hydroxide ion concentration will come from the concentration of the sodium hydroxide in the original question. So what's the pH of a 0.1 mole per decimeter cube solution of sodium hydroxide at 298? We know that sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So step one, we need to work out the concentration of the hydrogen ion. And to do this, we have to remember that Kw over the concentration of the hydroxide ion is equal to H+. So we extract that information from the question, remembering, of course, that Kw is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And from the question, the concentration of the hydroxide is 0 0.1. So this gives us a hydrogen ion concentration of 1 times 10 to the minus 13. Then step 2, we've got to calculate the pH, remembering that that's negative log to the 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration. We've now got that hydrogen ion concentration, so it's negative log to the 10, and we can pop in there 1 times 10 to the minus 13. And when you pop that into the calculator, it comes out as pH 13. Don't forget to record uh, your pHs to two decimal places. And of course, this comes as no surprise that sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base, has come out at such a high pH. We'd expect that if we think about the pH scale. And the last question I'd like you to bring with you uh, to your next lesson is to calculate the pH of a 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed solution of sodium hydroxide at 298K. Thank you for watching this tutorial. And we'll be looking at calculating the pH of weak acids in our next one.